continue the, the trade talks um, because none of them involved picks. Uh, did, did it obviously didn't generate what you thought? Did you still feel you just kind of revisit those this week? Uh, well, it, it, I had some discussions, so I furthered those along. So I thought it was a actually a pretty productive day. It didn't result in a deal, but um, I thought I'd, I had some good talks today. Do you feel it's necessary to acquire a D-man before free agency rather than you know hope to get a guy there? You know, a different dynamic before July 1 versus after July 1. The market shifts a little bit. You just have to know where the market goes. Um, so, I mean, it, it might be a little bit easier before. Uh, otherwise, you have to wait a bit till it, the market cl clears out a bit. There's not a lot of D on the UFA market, so I don't think that would be too long. Yankipov said he wanted a trade. Did you try to trade him as well? Um, he never told me he wanted a trade. No, no. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not going to comment on that. Do you feel more confident now that you will be able to get a defenseman before free agency than, than when you came to the draft? Um, you know, I had positive discussions this week. And uh, if I didn't have any discussions, I'd be a little um, disappointed. But I had positive discussions, and we'll see where it goes. You know, Tyler Benson, I mean, you mentioned yesterday you guys had talked about maybe trying to grab another pick in the late first round but that your guy was still there so were you happy when, when he was sitting there happy obviously some questions at least publicly with his with his injury but uh we've we've picked and prodded him at length and very happy with that pick um that might have been the guy that we would have moved up on Did the, the good fortune of last night uh change the way you look at your roster in terms of who may or may not be available because you probably adding in a piece that you didn't expect to have? Uh, that, that's a good question because, I mean, and again, without saying that Poole Jarvi will play, he's, you know, he's a lot more likely to play than the other guys uh, behind him. Um, I've always thought that those first three um, have a real good chance of playing and, contrib and contributing, and he's one of the, like the first three, meaning, you know, uh, Lane A, Poole Jarvi and, and Matthews. So, so yeah, it creates a different dynamic when we're trying to retool the roster, and it gives you a little more options. Can he be Curry for Gretzky? <laughs> <laughs> he's, I tell you what, he's a he's a real uh, he's a complete player, um, and he's he's got an underrated shot. Like we we all hear about Patrick Laine's shot, he's got a terrific shot. Line, so there's some similarities. Yeah, there's some similarities. Yesterday you said in round three you were hoping to address some organizational depth. You went with all defensemen. Uh, you took four defensemen last year in the draft. Was it ultimately you just felt like those guys were too good to pass up, or, or is that still an area of organizational depth? I just think like the more D we can get, the better. Um, we took, uh, and then we tried to address the right D also with Berglund and um, DeHarnay. Um, they take longer to develop, so uh, we, we got some we got some skill guys in there too. But uh, I think Gray McPhee is an intriguing pick. Uh, Bob will talk more about it, but uh, I think he kind of flew under the radar at the development team, and he's he's got some skill, and he's got some heart, like his like his old man. So, um, yeah. But the, on the D question, yeah, we, we, we want to continue to stockpile depth there. Peter, uh, GMs who are in your position trying to add defensemen have come out and said the prices are too high, and I imagine if they weren't, you'd have a deal done. How does how do how do things change over the next few days? Is it just a waiting game, or how does? You know, I, you just I just got to grind away. And, and like, for example, a couple of the discussions I had today, the, the positions had softened. So, like, you know, I think gradually, I guess what usually happens is whenever there's a deadline or a milestone, like, there's there's a loosening up. So, you know, the next one is, is, is July 1, you know. So we're, we're in the shopping period. You know, there's some movement there. It's, it's July 1. So we'll see. We just got to grind away. How many calls did you get around the clock at four games trying to jump in? I got a, I got a few right away, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it made you feel good about it. You said yesterday, you know, we asked you about or tried you about, um, trying to get a number one defenseman, and you said, I don't know if I can do that, but you had some bridge kind of deals. They wouldn't be number one, typically number one defenseman, though. Is that what you were talking about, that, per se, in, well, in a deal? They're just hard, hard, hard to get number one defensemen. It's just there's not many of them. They're hard to get. Um, but over half the teams in the league don't have one. So by definition, I, at least in my opinion. So 
there's there's deals out there, Jim, that we're working on that have good defensemen in them, and and they're smart. They can move pucks. Um, they're different players, and and uh, you know, as I said, I'd prefer a right shot, which is what we're focus focusing on. How do you, if the fans back home are saying, "Hey, where's the trades?" I mean, I pre presume the fans back home are saying, "Okay, we we want to get these picks," and they're thrilled with the RV and Benson, but they're saying, "Okay, where's the." Where's the ready-made players? Yeah, I, I can understand their uh, their <laughs> frustration, I guess. But I mean, you got to make the right deal. Like, like I'm, I'm having a lot of discussions. Before you uh, drafted before, um, how much consideration would you have given to drafting a defenseman? Um, we 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 gave it a lot of consideration. Yeah, a lot of consideration. We expect you to sign a veteran goalie, and then when July 1st comes, I think we'll look at uh, possibly filling that spot and and allowing Brassois to uh, compete also. Peter, you just got, I just spoke to George McPhee and he drafted his son, and he had a lump in his throat, uh, just uh, just not realizing how special that moment is. Um, yeah. Just a thought process. On well, he, you know what? He, we've watched him closely. He, he gets a lot of exposure on that national development team. Um, he, uh, you know, he, 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 for whatever reason, he didn't play a lot. But when we saw him, we had good viewings. He's got, he's got, he's got really good skill, and he plays with an edge. You know, he's got to develop. He's got to get, he's got to get bigger and stronger. Uh, he's got a real good shot release. A smart player. Um, and if you remember George when he played, he's got a heart of a lion, and this kid has the heart of a lion. So uh, that helped us in selecting him. Did you talk to George about Graham uh, or yep. after or before? And I, I talked to him at Green Grand Forks and stuff. Yeah. Peter, you have Drive as an unrestricted too. Is there any talks there of getting him done before? Uh, I, I spoke with his agent today, and uh, I think Eric's getting married today. So well, we're going to talk uh, after the weekend. Okay, you want to talk to him? Well, we're going to look to see what we can do. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, okay, thank you. I saw a twinkle in your eye when I asked you last night. So. <laughs> well, that was, was the one, the bloodshot one, or the yeah, other one? Yeah, the bloodshot. One. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start with Pujarvi at uh, number four. I'm not sure anybody expected him to be there. Uh, what was going through your mind when you realized that he was going to be your guy? Well, well we kind of thought that there was a possibility, of, you know, all those slim, but we thought it was possible, and uh, I was just really excited. You know, when it came about, and, you know, much, not much else you can say about that. But, you know, he's a tremendous player. Uh, he's really close to being ready. He, at the U18s this year, he got there late and, uh, you know, wasn't playing on a lot of sleep. I don't think he had a chance to adjust to the time change, and he was still the best player there. And it was like a man amongst boys there. So it was, it was nice to get him. A lot of guys that are 6'2 or, or taller, and even Benson, who's six feet, is, is a thicker body. I mean, the Oilers have had the reputation of being easy to play against and all that kind of stuff. Was there an emphasis on a certain size or, or, you know, weight level? Or no, not really. I mean, those are all guys that we liked and we, we feel can make plays. Like, you, you got to be able to make plays with the puck. And, and uh, you know, and, and they all fit that category. And, and, and the later you go, it's, it's, it's in the draft, it's harder and harder to find guys. And, and uh, you know, but, but first and foremost, you got to be able to make plays with the puck. We're all pretty familiar with Tyler Benson being an Edmonton guy, but how difficult was it to actually scout him this year with everything that he went through? Well, it was tough. He was really good in the Halenka. And, uh, you know, I thought he was their best forward at the Halenka. For sure, and then then we heard about the the surgery he had to have done, and it just kind of unraveled from there. Um, I saw him a couple times during the course of the year, and he was good, but you could tell he wasn't 100 percent. He was trying to play through it. It was important to him that he knew the draft and everything else, and he wanted to try to fight through it, which tells you a lot about the kid. But I mean, I'd seen a lot of them, and uh, if he played 72 games this year, he he wouldn't have been at 32. And, you know, he's just a real solid hockey player, great kid, works at it, a good hockey sense. You know, he has the pedigree of, of what he did at younger ages. And, and uh, you know, we saw him play at the Worlds two years ago as an underage, and, and 
and he was very good there too. So it was exciting. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. I wasn't sure, you know, he was sitting right there, and sometimes that doesn't always work for you. But uh, I was really happy when when he was there for us. Moving in, another pick to move late in the first in case he wasn't going to be there. Yeah, we looked at it, but you know. It, it's, a, it's just a tough thing to do, and, and we thought he, he might be, and we were relatively confident, but you never know, you know, and we had, we had other guys that, that we would have taken there. Uh, the Finnish defenseman went by the third round, I'm surprised he was still there in the first round. Of people had him. They had no worse than the second round. Yeah, everybody always says that, though, they're surprised <laughs> he was there. <laughs> Um, but we were, like, you know, uh, uh, we another kid that really had a good Holinka. Uh, it, it was a tough year in Saginaw. He lost his defensive coach early, and then they fired the head coach later. Like it was, it was a tough year for those kids in that team. And, and uh, you know, he's big. He can skate. He can move the puck. You know, he's, he's he likes to play with the game with a little bit of offensive flair. And, and I don't think the numbers that he put up this year are indicative of, of his of his talent level. So. It, you know, there's more there, just a, like a six foot six shot down so guy. Going back to Finland, it's actually uh, about going back to the first day of the Yeah, we, we're, we'll have that discussion with him and, and, yeah, and see what it's. Uh, well, I, we want him to go somewhere where he's going to play and develop. And, uh, you know, we'll have that discussion with him. And, and he's got options for sure. And, and uh, you know, we try to <clears throat> try to let the player determine that. And if they need help, we can help with it. But, you know, they, they've got their their paths where they want to go and it's it's tough to alter that for them they got to feel comfortable with it multiple fins you guys took uh, the Rassen and Casey coming over to the USHL and how does that factor into you know where they're going to play like you're just kind of talking about with the last kid yeah it's it's good I mean we, we can see him a lot more and uh you know he, he was he was a pleasant surprise he didn't play early he missed some hockey early he was injured early but he, he had a really good U18 tournament and uh, we've got a real good Finnish scout, and he was really high in this kid. And when he came back from the injury, he told us, you know, get on this guy and make sure you see him because there's something there. And, and he's just a real good, solid hockey player. And then all the Finns work hard and, and they're good kids, and they play the game probably more of the North American style than a lot. And, and uh, you know, he's a good guy to, to take a chance on. The other third rounders, Cairns and, and Bergland, can you tell us about that? Uh, Berglund's a big guy. He, he was he missed part of last year. Went through the draft, but he's a he's a he's a big right hand shot defenseman that really moved the puck. Good hockey sense. Put up good numbers this year uh, in the in the Finnish or sorry in the Swedish Junior League, uh, and just really like his upside and, and, and the puck moving ability that he has. And, and Karen's is is a guy that he, he played junior A. He's going to Cornell. Uh, he's going to have to make a decision where he's going to play this year. Uh, probably, you know, I don't know what he's if he's going to go back to uh, Georgetown or a lot of times those kids go to the USHL and play. But big kid, good puck mover, good hockey sense, and, and uh, a little bit raw maybe, but but uh, you know, a big guy that can skate and move the puck. And the, and the goaltender, uh, the, the numbers in the OHL weren't very good, but the viewings at other places must have been pretty impressive, weren't they? Well, the pedigree's there. Like he, he didn't have a great year. He played behind a good goalie, and you know, we understand that. And uh, he was their top goalie at the Holinka. Had a great tournament there. Had a good prospects game. And, and you know, we, we two or three guys that we consult with on the goaltenders. You know, we talk to them, and they like the athleticism. They like the technical part of his game. Uh, you just got to learn to be a little bit more consistent. But there's there's a lot there. And in the fifth round, it just seemed like the right thing to do. Do you envision Flea Arby playing with McDavid at some point? Would you take another Gretzky-Curry combo for the next decade? I don't know. You'll have to ask Todd McClellan that question. That's, uh, that's not my department. Do you allow yourself to dream of something like that? What's that? Do you allow yourself to dream of something like that?